Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to another edition of DIY Money. DIY Money. Check your morning brew today, Daniel. No, the actual newsletter, Morning Brew, that we what were is that? written up in. What's I, Morning Brew? I, admittedly, I don't know. I am not privy to the newsletter that apparently is all the rage. Logan knew about it. Well, and they profiled an episode that Logan was in. So that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Have we seen an uptick in uh, in listeners or downloads or any of that stuff or no? Uh, I think so, maybe. Yeah. Oh, we're all over know. those stats. Well, there's like, <laughs> there's different views on our stats page and all that, and you have to kind of distill into it. Distill into it. Have you distilled yes. into it? No. All right. Well, anyways, we appreciate Morning Brew and that shout out. Thank you so much. Uh, that was nice. Uh, I always, I always think like at some point we're gonna get some love from the outside world. We got a top ten podcast of somewhere in Europe or something. Somewhere, yeah, Europe. That was a big deal. That I mean, was that was that was pretty impressive. So yeah. again, we appreciate. I mean, we're getting recognized for for what we're doing. So uh, who was who was it? The comedian said, "Be so good they can't ignore you." Who was that? No clue. So Seinfeld, didn't work. I think somebody, somebody. No, it wasn't Seinfeld. Who was it? Ah, oh, shoot. Somebody's going to tell me. That's a great, it's a great quote. It wrote a book about it. Son of a gun. Well, apparently. <sighs> I'll think of it. it. a memorable enough person? Oh, boy, this is bad because it's a great comedian. Anyways, uh, yeah. How many great comedians are there? Not many, in my opinion. So let's go down the list. Oh, boy. Come on. You can put me on the spot like that? <sighs> Anyways, it wasn't Eddie Murphy. It wasn't. Uh, wasn't Chris Rock. Wasn't Chris Rock. Wasn't Seinfeld. Wasn't Seinfeld. It's it's the Sinbad. <laughs> it's the older white guy. Is Robin all I Williams? can think about. No, no, still living. Uh shoot. Older white guy. Who Fletch. Who still played living. Fletch? Fletch lives. Who played the guy? Chevy Ackroyd? Chase. Chevy Chase. No, it's not Chevy <laughs> Chase. I don't think it was Chevy Chase. Well, hopefully somebody will drop it into the show. Gosh, be so good they can't ignore you. That's what we're trying to do here on DIY Money. So we appreciate the love. Please remember our name. <laughs> Why? Did they not? What was that? Well, we didn't remember whoever said oh, that. Oh, got it. I didn't make the connection. Uh, clearly. Okay. Uh, anyways, how else is life? Uh, good? Great. Okay, we're, we're up on Bro Talk. That's it. That's all we got time for today. We're going to go right to the questions. We got a good one from Grant. We actually get this question periodically, especially from some of our younger clients, I have some qualitative thoughts on this, so we don't normally talk qualitative on the show. We typically talk quantitative, uh, but really? I, I we think mix so. it up. We, do we? Anyways, yeah. okay. Well, at least maybe I think we talk quantitatively most of, most of the time, uh, but this is a good one from Grant. Grant, what do you got? Hey, Quentin Daniel. Um, I had a question for you on employee stock purchasing programs. My company offers a program where I'm allowed to contribute um, up to 15% of my income into an employee stock purchasing program. So it's a 15% discount on the stock. The offering period is six months. Um, there's a look back provision and you're allowed to immediately sell. My question is surrounding the selling part. Um, is it worth to hold on to it if I believe it's going to go up in the future or should I just sell it right away, lock in that 15% gain and you know, kind of call it a day? Thank you guys so much. Appreciate the answer. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's describe what this is. Pretty common nowadays. Um, newer publicly traded companies. Uh, I know we have had some folks that were at some publicly traded companies. They had this same uh, opportunity. Mm -hmm. And it is an incentive uh, for employees to purchase stock and participate in the, hopefully, the growth and uh, you know, further appreciation of the company, the intrinsic value, and ultimately the stock. Many times, these companies not only give an opportunity to purchase at a discount, but they this look back provision that I believe Grant is referring to is that after six months, if the stock is like lower than where he purchased it, by even the discount, he gets the lower price or something of the sort. It, it's like an unbelievable incentive to say, you know, purchase our stock. We're going to give it to you at a discount. And if it's trading lower in the future by some 
period of time, and maybe the, maybe I'm making this up. I don't think I am, though, that they're actually going to give it even a better price. So it's a win-win. Now, here's the deal. You already know this. They're not doing this so that you can turn around and flip it for 15% less the short-term capital gains tax that you're going to pay. And if you're being paid handsomely, I'm assuming at a newer publicly traded company, you probably are making decent money. So your tax bracket's probably not all that great. You're going to pay short-term capital gains tax, ordinary income, and you're going to reduce your gain by that much. But you might still look and say, hey, well, you know, look, even at a 40% tax bracket all in, uh, you know, I'm still going to make, of course, now I got to do the math, <laughs> six, nine, 9% uh, right off the bat on my return. But that's not what the company is trying to promote. So yes, it's an option. I, the qualitative side, my opinion, as a small business owner, I don't like that. I, I don't like the idea of buying this and then just flipping it for some quick cash. Um, I believe that you have, more often than not, better insight on the company, the future prospects, the growth, et cetera, than anyone, literally, than probably any analyst on Wall Street who's covering the company. The point is, is that if you believe in the future of your company, this is an unbelievable opportunity for you to potentially gain significant wealth investing in the company. One story, very quickly, we have had in the last six to nine months, two new clients that have done just that, middle management, nothing extraordinary, at publicly traded companies, they have purchased the stock, they have held that stock because they believed in the company over a very long period of time. They retired with seven figures in that stock, not one, but two people. That's a possibility. However, flip side of this, if the prospects for the company change and you see this, please be careful not to drink the Kool-Aid and go down with the ship. I personally have seen this before as well. I saw this from afar with employees at Enron. Okay. If you don't know what that is, just look that up. Not to insult your intelligence, but a lot of people don't know the story of Enron. But I also saw it with a more street worthy name that you would recognize Kmart. Kmart promoted stock opportunities for all their employees, regardless of where they were in the, the level of employment, and the company went bankrupt. And many employees who worked there felt that the company was fine, everything was good, management promoted owning the stock, do not sell the stock, and they wrote it all the way into bankruptcy. So I believe, if you believe in the prospects of the company, what an unbelievable opportunity. Take advantage of it. Daniel will probably speak to the size, et cetera, which is worthy as well. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. And in my opinion, my opinion I wouldn't flip it for peanuts when you have an opportunity to find the elephant. I just made that up. Wow. That's money. Would you prefer an elephant over peanuts, though? It's, it's the story of, you know, the guy who there's two people. They, they're hired to shovel the, the poop. The excrement. And one guy is like, I don't want to shovel this. This is ridiculous. And the other guy just gets in there. He's shoveling, he's shoveling, he's shoveling. And the guy says, what, what are you doing? What, what, are you, what are you doing? Why are you so excited? He goes, all this poop? There's got to be a pony in here. Just a different way of looking at things. I so suppose. yeah, you could take the peanuts or you can have the whole elephant. How do you eat elephant? One bite at a time. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Dad jokes. Today, all right, huh? here we go. I'm just on fire today. Yeah, so what percentage would you look at? I mean, if you were starting to acquire something like this, uh, hopefully somebody's... Also investing in their 401k, IRA, whatever. All in. All in. All in. You just do no, all of your all portfolio. Of it. Into all it. the chips on the table. No. And then drink not. as much Kool-Aid as possible. Yes. Never sell. Ever. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> I'm just joking. Joke. <laughs> yeah, joking. <laughs> Disclaimer. So how much would you... I Like if you were in that position where you were buying into employer stock, I mean, would you go... Is, is I mean, we're not advising a certain percentage. Me but personally? You personally, what would you go? I would do a lot. Well, I'm going to be candid with you. If I, if I worked there, if I mm -hmm. believed in it, I mean, think about this. We're not publicly traded. How many times have I pushed all my chips into the table on this business? Well, yeah. Multiple times. Mm -hmm. 
and would would continue to do it. I believe in the business. I believe in the prospects, etc. You do have management authority. I here, do. I do can make the decisions, etc. But I will say, there are individual. You, he has insight. Mm-hmm. He, he he just being around, knowing, etc. And he will know when the thing when the tide begins to turn. He will know. The difficulty is people know that. Mm-hmm. And then they don't act on it. That's a problem. And make make no mistake. Don't just look at your company and go, "Oh my goodness, our price is too high," or the the sector is on fire, you know, et cetera. Mm-hmm. No, it's the prospects. The other quick story. How about the individual we worked with who was actually let go from his employer, held all of his stock because even though he was let go, he was very frustrated about that. Yeah. Of course, he didn't want to be let go. He knew that that was the right business decision for the company at the time. And he knew that the prospects for the company were good. Holy cow, was he right? He has done exceptionally well holding that stock. So, me personally, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I would be, I'd probably be upwards of twenty five percent or so. I'm not advising that. Mm-hmm. We wouldn't advise that to people. But if you, I've seen a lot of wealth created with concentration in company stock. Absolutely. I think you have to remember that uh, what you see going on in the company can sometimes be very different from what you see going on in the stock price. And Mm. oftentimes those can disconnect for some period of time. So uh, while the company internally can be doing really well, innovating, uh, rolling out new products, you can go through times when the stock price doesn't respond to that at all. And you can also go through times where the stock price is carried by the market and internally uh, things aren't necessarily going well with the company. So don't equate that those two always move in tandem at the same time. As we sit here today, Mm -hmm. Bed Bath & Beyond is down 26%. Okay. Personally, I have no idea if Bed Bath & Beyond is a value here or if this is the start of major issues. Mm-hmm. But you know who knows? The employees and management of Bed Bath & Beyond. They do. Mm-hmm. Because they know that either these supply chain issues that are hurting this stock, they're, they're not getting any better anytime soon and holy cow, this is going to be terrible. Or they go, oh my, yeah, th- we've seen this. We've seen, we've seen holdups before. We, you know, this is a miss on, this is wrong on Wall Street. And if that's the case, I'm not saying it is, I do not know. Yeah. Those people, that's how wealth is created. They'll look at that and they'll see the disconnect, exactly what you're talking about. And they'll go, I'm going to buy some of this stock today. This is crazy. Our company's solid. We're going places. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that's the case. I, mean, mm-hmm. I don't know. My gut says it's not, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair. <laughs> uh, so if this was me or if I was advising somebody on a financial plan, I would look somewhere for most people in the range of, say, 3% of your overall portfolio uh, to if you're very aggressive uh, and you have a, a good time horizon and or you're really building a portfolio. So there's just an era of life where you can kind of contribute a lot into a plan like this. Because you're early on in your working career, you're going to have income that increases over time. And you can go up to a higher percentage, like a 20 or 25% potentially. Uh, so the percent for me would really range. Depending Here's on the life other stage. thing. More mm-hmm. than likely, he's getting options. Yeah. Maybe he already has some company stock. That has to be factored in as well, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's not just the discounted purchase in the non-retirement aspect. Absolutely. Yep. And then the look back period is really important because... Uh, you described one way it works. Another way that it works is uh, a lot of times it's quarterly. It sounds like in this case, it's six months, but they will kind of do the price at the beginning or price at the end and then give you take the lowest price beginning or end of the look back period and then do the discount based off of that. So, I mean, you imagine in an upward trending market, uh, a six month look back period, six months ago, the you know the stock could have been 20% lower or 10% lower than it is now, then take another 15% off of that. I mean, you're buying it uh, maybe it was overvalued then and it's overvalued now, but you're you're getting a significant discount. Sometimes. It's not dilutive. This isn't a dilutive uh, endeavor by the company, right? Th- this is is are they issuing treasury stock to do this? Do you know? I'm just curious. I didn't. I don't know offhand. Yeah. So, so they're not. Yeah, they're in a sense. That's a good uh, question. Yeah, I'd like I to know. I'd be curious about stock. that. What I ask about that is options are are diluting uh, share share uh, count. So. Ultimately, it's actually a corporate action. People love getting options. They think this is amazing, etc. It is a non-expensed corporate action that actually dilutes shareholder value. I do not like necessarily massive option structures in publicly traded companies. However, my curiosity is allowing people to buy in to stock is a non-dilutive. I'm curious. I need to look that up. 
a non-dilutive uh, uh, action, which is which is even better. It, it's it's even uh, more advantageous for the company, the individuals, etc. Mm-hmm. Still, no expense to the company. Actually, though, no, because they're probably making up to fifteen percent, so there is an expense there. They're putting some skin in the game as well. I mean, yeah, somebody has to make up to the weeds of a Well, so I'm just yeah. I'd be curious. I need to I need to look into that. That's that's a fascinating thing. I'll I'll look into that. My own time. Great. I have no idea where I was going on my thought train, but I like. I know. I totally I, interrupted. If you have you. this at the company, so when I worked at Starbucks as a barista, I don't know, forever ago. Uh, I mean, nobody they, knew that. You just really? came out. You just this is new Sorry. information. I mean, I uh, knew that. But. Yeah. So worked as a barista, but I mean, Starbucks. I don't know if they still do, but previously, at least when I worked there, they offered this program to everybody. I mean, you worked. It was like twenty or twenty-five hours a week, and you had access to this program as a part-time person. You could put ten or fifteen percent of your check get this stock at a discount and then, you know, sell it right away and, and make money on it. So, uh, so it's not just, you know, like, uh, new or merging, you know, tech companies where people are getting highly compensated. A lot of various companies have some good benefits. And I think the biggest lesson here is to understand and look at your company's benefits program and see how that might work for you. Don't just go, Oh, I'm not full time. So I don't get insurance. So I don't have any benefits mm. really understand what each company has to offer and actually consider that, especially in this era of a competitive job market, the difference between two companies and what your full compensation might be uh, between those two companies. I love it. All right. Let's end on that note. Grant, uh, hopefully that answers your question. That was a really good one. And all Grant did was sent us a voice memo we're getting a lot of questions that are written out. Maybe they just love your new YouTube series, Questions with a CFP. P. Daniel's been doing mailbag questions for people who are not sending audio questions. You don't get the $25 Amazon gift card, but you get Daniel reading the question on YouTube. So if you haven't checked that out, flip on over to the YouTube channel and you can see the questions with a CFP. P. <laughs> Required Anyways, in the trademark. It is required. Uh, but all Grant did was send us an audio question. Now we're going to kick him a $25 Amazon gift card. So we really appreciate that. Uh, check us out on YouTube. All the social links are up. DIY Money Podcast or where you can find us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, etc. Remember, friends, the secret to wealth, pretty darn simple. Live on less than you make. Invest the rest and do so for a very long time. Make it a great one. <laughs>